all ones. The Bluetooth device. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good to be back. I want to appreciate everyone who held on to me while I was away. Thank you for standing in the gap. And I want to thank everyone that the Lord has been using in this uh, morning the declarations. Uh, I want you to know that um, what God is doing through you and everybody that is joining in in the dance, it is not, you may think, um, oh, what am I doing? Is this thing really effective? <laughs> you just take a look around you and you get your answer. Things are happening every day, everywhere, that you may not understand why they are happening the way they are happening, but I can assure you that things are happening. They may not look obvious at this present moment, but you can be sure that things are definitely happening. And I want to encourage you in your private closets, don't give up. You just continue in that which we are doing in this place, expand it, uh, be consistent in these declarations, in this dance, and soon you will see. I want to appreciate that also, Daphne, for I joined in at the very tail end when she was rounding up this day, and uh, like the mother that she is. That was quite encouraging, even the beats that I had. I wasn't in a good place to talk, so that was why I couldn't talk this day. But we are back, and I want to appreciate everyone. It's good to be back. Yes, we are advancing. We are moving on, and we are taking it higher and higher every day as the Lord helps us. Amen and amen. Um, today is the last day in the month of April, and I just, I was going to make some declarations, but the Lord wanted us to get into something, you know, that the Lord began with us, even on the retreats that we went. And I just believe that the Lord will have us delve into it a little to expand on it and to understand. I'm looking at, um, so we're looking at your appointed legislation. There is a, there is a priesthood legislation that you, that is appointed to you or that you are appointed to. Amen. There is a feast or there is a priesthood that you are appointed to, that I am appointed to. In every place that we find ourselves, there are things that the Lord had given unto us. And I'm going to read the scripture in um, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 12. Does some of us know that scripture? Uh, Deuteronomy 12, verse 3. Okay, I'll read it from, I'll take it from verse, okay, let's take it from verse one so that we will see. These are the statutes and ordinances which you shall be watchful to do in the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers gives you to possess all the days you live on the earth. Now, there's a place where he says, Wheresoever the soles of your feet shall tread, 
I have given you for a possession. In other words, whether you are, you may say, I'm not from Qatar, I'm not from Nigeria, I'm not from UK, I'm not from um, the United States, but that is where the Lord has planted you for a time and that becomes your dwelling place because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So wheresoever the Lord appoints unto you at any given moment is a place he has given you to take possession of. And for the time, so long as you are there, that is why he commanded, he told when the, the children that were in captivity in Babylon, he told them, he said, pray for the peace of that nation, because it is in the peace and the prosperity of that nation that you will also prosper. So you see, if that nation is not prospering, your prosperity is not guaranteed. Why? Because the husband man is always the first partaker of the fruit of the vine. So when you legislate your priesthood and you begin to pray for the prosperity of that land, uh, things begin to function. Now, when we talk about prosperity, remember that you are one. I think the, maybe the last time I was here, was, we were talking about, you know, um, how you were ordained to fix the earth. Okay, sorry, that was um, the unscripted, the last unscripted we had. Your ordination is that of fixing the earth. Your ordination is that of fixing the earth. You were ordained to fix the earth. You were ordained to repair the earth. In every place that you go, you are supposed to fix the earth. And the fixing of the earth is by no means you constructing good roads. Yes, that is inclusive, but the kind of good roads you are constructing is the good roads of the spirit. Where you begin to construct and cast up highways, just like Isaiah 62, verse 10 tells us, he said, Go through, go through the gates, cast up, cast up an highway, gather out the stones, lift up a banner for the people, which means that there is a highway that you are casting up. Isaiah 35 tells us that the, on that in that place there will be a highway there, it shall be a highway of holiness. He said, He said, Men will walk in it, say, though they be fools, they shall not err. In other words, there are, there's a highway of the spirit that you begin to cast off by your priesthood legislations that aligns men, even though they were foolish. What is foolishness? Foolishness is that you are not walking in the way that the Lord had appointed unto you to work, to walk. So if you are not walking in the way that you have been appointed to walk, that is foolishness. What the Lord said, do they be fools, they will not err because on that highway that you are casting up, it's a highway that we see anyone that steps on that highway, they just come into, they, they are reconfigured into divine shaping. They begin to take on the nature of God because the highway is called the highway of holiness. So anyone that steps on it, they become holy. Are you seeing what I'm saying this morning? So God is doing something. And so he said to them, he said, these are the statutes and the ordinances. Those who execute ordinances are people who, who understand that they have been are ordained as priests. And that is why he said unto Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, he said, Do not say that I am a child, for before you were formed in your mother's womb, I ordained you to be my a prophet unto the nations. Then verse 10, he began to talk about, he began to show him the assignment, the assignment to pull down. What are you pulling down? The things that are not in, a, in a, according to pattern. If anything that does not reflect the pattern of the heavenly building or the heavenly, uh, that, that does not replicate all that is in heaven around the throne of God, the things that God has established in his realm. He said, those things, you are to pull them down. And that's the same thing that he's, he also began to talk about in Deuteronomy. He said, which you shall be watchful to do in the land which the Lord, the God, the God of your fathers gives you to possess all the days of your life. Verse two, he said, you shall surely destroy all the places where the nations you dispossess served their gods upon the high mountains and the hills and under every green tree. In other words, in every place where there is a shrine, in every place where there is a, um, um, a dark place to the dark altar, you are supposed to destroy them. Now you say, ah, as a claim, am I supposed to go into their shrine to go and start destroying things? If you have access, why not? But even if you don't have access, 
There is an access that you have that is beyond your being there physically. And one of the things we are going to start learning, which the Lord is asking us to dedicate the whole of May in doing, all the Wednesdays in May will be dedicated in doing that, is to teach us. You are going to be, you are going to, we are going to enter into the supernatural us. In other words, you will enter into the supernatural you. You will be introduced into the supernatural you. You see, unfortunately, you see that the people of the, the dark side, the dark altars, the dark operations, the people of, um, um, when you talk about those of uh, um, the, 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 the cultic priesthood, uh, what they have been doing, they have been ahead of the believers in teaching, in teaching even children, establishing schools, taking over the educational sector, taking over the business sector, taking over the media, you know, in teaching and legislating the dark priesthood and teaching them the supernatural in the corrupt sense. But you see, we are going to start learning, we are going to start, we are going to start entering and will be introduced. It's what I try to do is just, just like we, 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 we took um, understanding ascensions, it's just introduction. It is as you begin to engage. You see, it, 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 I'm glad that both some who are on who have been following us every morning and those who are just coming in, there are people who are connecting with this, you know, in Malaysia, in China, you know, they are and they are breaking into it. Maybe, maybe because they have been exposed to this supernatural operation. So when they see that, oh, so this thing actually we believers, we have the original, it's easy for them to break into it and to understand it. That is why, you see, anybody, any person from India, places like India, places like China, places like um, Japan, you know, where um, Malaysia, that's the Asian countries, um, where they understand um, meditations by reason of their Hinduism, Buddhism, and all of that, and the, 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 the Eastern religion, because they understand the power of meditation, it is easy for them to get into ascension. It is, it is easy for them to break into the supernatural. So when they get saved, the first thing the enemy wants to do is to tell them that that thing that you used to do, you can't do it as a believer, because if you do it, you are entering into the old cause. I want you to understand that it is a lie. It's a lie because what he did was to take the original you to corrupt it. But now that you are saved, you begin to bring that into divine alignment and you will see that there are no limits to how far you will ascend and to the things that you will break into. Amen. And I want us to understand, you see, when I, I, when I came back, that they, they have not opened a particular page of um, my telegram for a long time. So I just decided to just go through yesterday. And the first thing that I saw was um, the, the, the new prime minister of Scotland mm. legislating priesthood on the first day of the office, talking about the Ramadan past. Scotland. This is Scotland that John Knox prayed, give me Scotland or I die. How come we don't have a generation who can key into that particular prayer that John Knox prayed, where he shut down every operation of darkness to the point that the Queen of England was saying that she feared the prayer of John Knox more than she feared the army of Scotland. One man held the whole nation to a standstill by reason of the power that came through the knowledge and understanding of his, of his priesthood legislations and the wisdom glory that he manifested in that realm. One man. So what exactly are we doing? Now he said, you shall surely destroy all the places. In other words, you enter by the supernatural, like um, in the few places that we had the, the privilege of going into, where we had to be legislating priesthood in their mosque and after a while, because the mosque was a major place that was saturated with leasing certain um, 
you know, they were releasing fragrances into the atmosphere by way of the things that they speak and declare every morning, every afternoon, every evening into the atmosphere. They were releasing things. They were releasing power. They were saturating. They were releasing fragrances. So we were going there with them, but we were changing things from the inside. And soon, that was a shutting down because I cannot be in a place and dark place to do. light and darkness cannot be in the same place. And the first command he gave me was when I get into a place, the first thing I must do is to shut down every place where they once called upon their gods. And I'm not going to shut down from the place of the physical. I'm going to enter into the root and get put their gods to sleep. So it may take me six months, but I will do it. It may take me one year, but I will do it. It may take me three weeks, I will do it. It may take me three nights and 40 nights, it makes no difference. I will continue until I see the glory of the Lord breaking out in the territory that he has allotted me for that particular season. And when that is done, when it is established and the glory of the Lord breaks out in that place and the altar of God is established and fixed, in that place, I have repaired. Then they know there is a guarantee that the land is fixed because men, righteous men, will be raised that will begin to guard, that will begin to fix, that will begin to legislate, that will begin to push forth and begin to establish the kingdom of God on the earth realm. Then I will move to my next place of assignment. Do you understand that, that there is a movement, you are a flowing stream? There is a river that make it glad, the streams of God. Listen, you are a flowing stream. You are not meant to be stagnant. You have been in a position. You have been in a place for years. Even if, even in your, at your place of work, do you know that when you, it is an insult that after three years, you are still in a particular position. No, it is not godly. There have to be, because you are a moving stream. So you have to be moving because you, when you have legislated in a particular place, you flow, they, they move you up, they move you up a cadre because there must be a continual flow of what God is doing through you and by you in your life, in your situation, and in the territory that you have been allotted. Somebody hearing me this morning. And that is why I'm releasing on this platform right now for those of you who are in places and you, you know, you just know it. You know it within yourself. You know it by every standard that is around you that you've been stagnant. I break, I decree now, they breaking loose from that place. Everything that has held you down, those chains are broken, those limitations are taken off and you begin, I release you to begin to advance like the flowing stream that you are, even as you come into divine alignment with the flowing stream of Yeshua, even the rivers of living waters. You begin to flow like rivers of living waters, bringing healing into places, bringing healing onto nations, bringing healing onto territories, and bringing the wisdom glory, revealing the wisdom glory in every place that you go, so that your name will be called upon to say, we need you, for we have seen that God is with you in the name of Jesus. Whether at your place of work, whether in your life, whether in your marital, whether in your, in your, in your status quo as a human being, I decree now that the status quo is broken. There is a rocking of the table. There is a shaking, like the eagle stares her wing, her, her, her nest. I decree a divine stirring of your nest right now and a edging out so that where you have not walked before, you will begin to run. You will where you have not even where you have not scaled before, you will not only scale, but you will continue to run and you begin to fly and you begin to soar in the name of Jesus. Amen. So he said, you will dispossess who you dispossess where they serve their gods. You will break down those mountains. You will pull down, you will root out those altars. You will throw down the God. That is your ordination. He said unto Unto Jeremiah, he said, your ordination is to pull down, to throw down, to root out, then to plant and to establish. What are you planting? The kingdom, what? In the places where you have pulled down, in the places where you have rooted out, in the places where you have destroyed everything that does not replicate the nature, the power, the glory of God, you pull them down, then 
you now begin to you plant the kingdom of God, you plant a new operation, you make a new decree, and you legislate, a, you establish a new priesthood, and you begin to say, now light has come unto you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Therefore, I now speak even in your life that where darkness has been speaking, now light begins to speak in the name of Jesus. Where strange powers have been operating, I shut down those doors and I decree right now that the glory of the Lord begin to manifest in a new light, in a new way, in the name of Jesus. I don't know why GB was speaking. The Lord said it is not accidental that somebody that is, that is living in the UK is legislating this morning's dance. There is a reason for that because I have a word for those in the UK, for those in Europe, for those. Look at Scotland. Oh my God! When I read that yesterday, I had I had an anger that that pushed out some 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 um, you know annoying goosebumps on my body. So I want to speak to those saying living in the UK, those living for those of you who are listen. Because I, I, I have said this time and over again, strangers are the ones, are the are key vessels that God uses to transform nations. God did not send you to Oman by accident. God did not send you to Qatar by accident. God did not send you to the place that he sent you to by accident. God did not send you to, took you out of India to take you to, to take you to Oman, to take you to um, whether Saudi Arabia to take you to any place to take you to, I, I have some, I have some people who live in Qatar. They are from India. God did not just take you there for accident by accident. He did not take you there for fancy. There is a reason. He has put something in you. There is a priesthood ordination. There is a power. There is an ordination of legislation that he has put in you. And for you to administer the life of God in you in that land. Because the people who are there have been bound. So he brings in a stranger who understands him, in whom he has poured himself, and he takes them there. The Lord did not take you to the United States just for you to go and make dollars. No, you could have made that even from wherever you came, wherever he sent you from. The, you could have been in Nigeria. There are people who are in Nigeria, if because it's dollar they want, they are making the dollars online even better than you that is living there. There is a reason, God, there is another reason God took you there. It is time for you to break into that purpose. It is time for you to come into divine alignment. Therefore, I decree now that your, 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 your heart be open that the light of God begin to shine into you to reveal his wisdom glory in your life that will begin to express the power, the nature, the awesomeness of God in every place that you are in the name of Jesus. What I say to you, I speak not just to you, but unto your sons, unto your daughters, unto your children, even your toddlers, even those whom you are still carrying in your loins. I speak unto them now that they will come into divine alignment. I was sharing with the elders in the camp some strange things. You know, when we are decreeing things, <laughs> I'm privileged to know one of the schools in the United States that run a kingdom curriculum. I knew when they started that school. That was around 1996. And their fear as at the time was that when these children begin to enter college, because what they do in that school is that they, they prayerfully, they pray for children yet unborn that they will be aligned. So the Lord began to direct them. And they will go from one hospital to another. The Lord will time them. They will see a pregnant woman. And the Lord will say, the seed in that womb is a covenant child. And they will begin to follow up the woman without the woman knowing. As soon as the woman puts to bed, they come and they say unto the woman, your child is a special child. They will open the child's scroll unto the woman. And the glory of God will fill the place. Then they will take up that child. They will start monitoring the child. They will tell the child. They will train the woman. And I want to speak it unto some of you who may be breastfeeding or who will soon start breastfeeding. <laughs> you know, 
They will start training the woman that, listen, anytime you breastfeed this child, these are the words you should speak. Tell them, read out their, 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 their priesthood and what it means that you must also take in the word so that the word will mingle with the breast milk and you begin every time you are feeding them, tell them that this milk that I'm giving you is the word of God that begins to shape your being and strengthen your bone. It begins to form your stature by the Spirit. So I declare you saved. I declare and I align you with that which the Lord had in mind that even as you take in this breast milk, you come into divine alignment. Now, for some, you see, the beauty of the Lord is that there is never a gap. Because right now, as I'm saying it, somebody, I just come, I just perceive somebody's thought that I say, ah. Why didn't I know this when I was still breastfeeding my children? Listen to this. For the fact that you breastfed your children means that you can still speak that. And all you need to do is connect. This is what the supernatural does. You connect to their childhood days and you say, child, hey, call them by name one by one and begin to say, for the fact that you took this breast milk, I now decree and declare that every breast milk that came into you formed your bones, formed your, your thinking patterns. Therefore, I declare you, I call you into divine alignment that from today, you start walking in accordance to the speaking of the word of God that was implanted in my personal. Even if you were not saved as at the time, now you are saved. So you, you return knowing that God, listen to this, listen to this mystery, knowing that Jesus, he was the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world, which means there was already salvation in your vein. There was already salvation. It's just that you did not align. But now that you are coming to alignment, you go, go beyond the time that you were formed in your mother's womb. Because he says, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew me. And he ordained me. So I connect into my ordination. The, my ordination before I was formed in my mother's womb, I connect to that and I call that and I begin to release that onto the lives of my children. So they began to teach, they would teach these mothers. Then, but as soon as the child clocks one year, they will come and take the child and enroll the child in this special kingdom gifted school. They had other primary school where they also run kingdom curriculum. But this particular school was for, for people whom the Lord directed them to. People, you can't apply for the school day. We search for you. They will search for you. Now, their worry was that when these children begin to get into colleges, how are they going to cope? What will happen to them? They were surprised because they were not teaching them the normal educational curriculum. They were surprised that when these children started getting into college, they were topping their classes. Not only topping their classes, educationally, they were topping their classes in the supernatural. What do I mean by that? Hmm. There was a particular one, that's the one I want to share about. There was a particular one where they were playing, they were running a particular, um, what do they call it? Um, 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 weather movie or educational movie, as they call it, on the new parenting, the new parenting. Where, they can, where you even have the right to reject your parents, to change your parents. So this child, he was in the class and what he was seeing on the screen stirred up an anger. He was 12 years old. Or not he was, okay, yeah, as at the time he was 12 years old. Stirred up an anger in her, and she looked at the screen and said, because this is wrong and because I am here, these children will not be held in bondage. And the screen exploded. The screen exploded. So they replaced the screen immediately. It exploded again. Then the teacher 
now began to descend. The teacher also is a woman who understood the supernatural, but on the dark side, and began, she was actually a sorcerer, and she began to scan by the spirit and located this girl. Then now focused her gaze on her. Then the girl now turned and started looking at her. It was said that the woman was slain, went under the power, and began to converse. And the young girl walked up to her and said, you have two choices. You get saved or you die in darkness and you go to torment. And she said, let me show you where you are going. And she now did this. And the portal was opened. And the woman saw where she was headed. She did not need to preach much. The woman writes there, the conversion stops and she confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then she did this again and the portal went. And all the children in the class saw it. All the children, even those who were already confessing what they wanted them to confess, all of them got saved. Revival broke out in that class. And that was how they couldn't send anybody out because anyone that came around the child got saved. Because she became a portal. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. And we are going to start seeing this manifestation because the darker, he said, gross, he said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Then men shall come to the brightness of your rising. Do you know why? The darker the darkness, the brighter, because the stronger the darkness, the brighter the light. You may be the only one in the territory that God has given unto you where he has planted you at this present time. But I have news for you that the reason he planted you, he needed just one light. I shot a man through whom I was so. <laughs> He's always seeking one man, one man, one man. So what the enemy have done is that he has gone in advance to do what? To establish schools of supernatural, to establish schools of sorcery. So now they even have a school registered, a school of Satan. Where they teach satanic studies. You see, I decided that I will no longer talk about, there are some of you that is in, uh, uh, in, in the educational sector. I'm praying. I'm pressing into it that one of these days we are going to have an educational seminar. We are going to hold a seminar for teachers. The, as soon as the Lord gives us the release and gives us the go ahead, we are going to advertise it for a while so that people will register. And we are going to take people through a Kingdom curriculum that will be driven by people who understand supernatural so that while you are teaching in class, you are creating portals on the board. So that you begin to use mathematics, you begin to use English, you begin to use history, you begin to use all the subjects that you are teaching to create portals that children will begin to assess and walk into the supernatural. Because they've been doing, have you not heard, when we were in secondary school, teachers were initiating students into witchcraft, into sorcery. So why can't we, by the supernatural, begin to get children into the kingdom and get them aligned with their destinies? The way to do it is to shut down the old, old oppression. And that's what the Lord told them. This is your ordained, your appointed legislation in every place that you go. Wow, we have a very few minutes to go. Verse 3, listen to this. He said, you shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and burn their 
Asherim with fire. The Asherim means shrine, altars. You shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy their name out of that place. Just a moment. Verse 3. I want to. now burn down their Asherah posts. For those of us who are in the Middle East or who have who understand the Eastern religion or the Asian worship, you know, you will you will know what the Asherah pole is. And cut down their carved idols, completely erase the, the name of their gods. In other words, one of the things we have not done in the land is that, and that is why you see that people they even mingle. That's why you even see preachers, because they really did not understand what the salvation, the covenant they entered into. That is why you will see that a man will mount the pulpit to say he wants to teach the word of God and will have some backup around their waists. Those guys, what even climbing on the altar alone with that particular thing, they have become a portal, they have become a doorway to allow for satanic worship sorcery to enter into that congregation. But we say never again. We say it is shut down. We shut it down completely in the name of Jesus. Now look at it. Just what I said just now is actually in verse four. He said, do not worship the Lord your God, in the way these pagan people worship their gods. Rather, you must seek the Lord your God at the place of worship he himself will choose from among all the tribes, the place where his name will be honored. Let this be your watchword today, even as you step into places, as you go out in worship today, I pray and I speak over your life. I speak into your... The, Lives of your children. I remember my son, my youngest son, when we were growing up. You, you don't you don't just come to teach him just anything. He will challenge you. So I speak unto you this morning that as you step into places with your children, with your grandchildren, that even if you were not sensitive enough to know that this is not the place, that your children will be pulling you, Mommy, I don't want to go, Mommy, I don't want to go. And if you have not been listening today, your ears will be open and your eyes will be open. Your ears will be open to hear. Your eyes will be open to see what that child is seeing that you have not seen over the years. There are some of you that every Sunday you find that your children will be crying, grumbling that they don't want to go to church, and you be, you will beat them into going. There are some of you that your children were okay until you took them to that place of worship. So-called worship. This morning, I pray that your discernment will be sharpened, that your spiritual eyes will be opened, that your, your, your eyes will be enlightened to see, to behold the glory of the Lord and that through the glory of the Lord, you begin to understand things that are happening around you from his own perspective so that you will see things the way he sees them. You will hear things the way he hears them. You will know things the way he knows them. I release you into that operation now in the name of Jesus. I declare peace. I declare rest unto you that in the place of peace and rest, you begin to break into realms. You begin to break beyond limitations. You begin to ascend into glory heights like you have never known before in the name of Jesus. I pray that in the place that the Lord has established you, in the place that the Lord has sent you to, that your light will so shine that you will come into unusual alignments with the things that the Lord, in fact, that I pray this day that paraventure you have not known the reason God sent you to that place. By my speaking this morning, I decree and declare that you will come into an enlighten, enlightenment of the purpose of which God took you to that territory to give you that land, to possess that land, and to possess that gate, and to align that gate. The power of alignment rests on you. Whether on, on whatever platform you are listening 
you have tuned in and they are okay on Facebook and everyone that will listen on Facebook. I speak unto you on Telegram and everyone that will pick up the recording. I speak unto you on Zoom and I speak unto you on Zoom. I speak unto you on Miss LR. I speak unto you on YouTube and everyone that will connect with the YouTube broadcast this morning and any other day. I decree and declare that from today, that whatsoever it is that had held you bound and has limited your knowledge, your wisdom, I, re I release you from those limitations in the name of Jesus. And I declare your advancement. I declare your pulling through. I declare your breaking through. I declare your breaking into territories, into realms, into portals. I decree and declare that the, you, your understanding will be brought into divine alignment with the with 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 the knowledge that the Lord had bestowed on you that have been awaiting a stare. By reason of this declaration, there is now a stirring in your heart to come and to activate the things that had been lying dormant in the name of Jesus. Every gift that had been lying dormant, by reason of this declaration, there is now an activation in your life, in your heart, and those gifts now come to life and the speaking of the power of God in the name of Jesus. The limitations, the limits are broken. I declare the limits are broken. They are taken out. And I decree and declare that you come into the stream of life, into the stream of living waters, and that the fountain of God will begin to rise and the petals of those fountains will begin to cover not just you, but everyone that is around you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that though your children may not be with you, but you are connected by the spirit and this that i speak into your life right now because of the fountain that is rising it begins to flow onto your children whether they are sleeping whether they are awake whether they are in another country whether they are in another location it makes no difference because you are here and because you house them because you breastfed them i decree and declare that the breast milk that flowed from your person, even now that you have come into alignment, begin to speak to them. And any child that have been going astray by reason of this declaration, today we call them back, we call them back into alignment. They come into alignment and into the speaking of their ordination in the name of Jesus. We say that everything the enemy placed to derail these children, we shut them down. We shut down those altars and we release the glory of God over them in the name of Jesus. I call my children one by one. I call Lois, I call Esosa, I call Gideon. I want you to unmute your mic this morning and begin to call your children by name and say, I bring you into divine alignment. I call you into divine manifestation and, de and I, I decree and I call forth the supernatural oppression that have been lying dormant. Mm -hmm. It's been waiting to find expression that your dream gate becomes active. I align your dream gate and I seal it up in righteousness, even from this morning, in the name of Jesus. I call on my children, I call on my grandchildren, call on Diana, call on Gideon, call on the name of Jesus, I call on the name of Jesus, I call on the name of Jesus, I call on the Yeah, <laughs> 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 
Listen carefully. I want you guys to listen. Your children are sleeping. Go walk into their bedroom, lay hands on their head, lay hands on their tummy, and say, Every gift that supernatural you that can be lying dormant, I awaken it now. I release it to begin to manifest, even as they are aligned in God. That you will come, I call you back to your original scroll. If they are not, if your children are not with you, whether they are big, whether they are even married, self, it doesn't matter. Listen, they sucked your breasts, mothers. Fathers, you fathered them, and they still call you father. They still call you dad. You still have, you still, it may not be the kind of authority you had on them, but you still have a say in their lives. And guess what? You can still speak into their destinies. So start calling them by name. Lay hands, see yourself lay hands on them. A child is going, you see a child doing what they should not be doing. Kabadun, they shall carry on that. You call them by name and say, today I lay you down and I lay my hands on your belly and I lay my hands on your head and I decree now that everything I call you, I call back your scroll, that which was missing, I call it back and I call you back into divine alignment with that which was written even before you were formed in my womb. I decree now, even before you were released as an arrow of destiny. I decree now that the scroll 
that your mom and I, or your father and I, the scroll that we formed, we built a body for. As a mother, say the scroll that this with this body, with me, a body was introduced, was, was, was built to incubate the scroll that was shot into destiny. I now decree that that scroll begin to speak in your life. It starts finding expression. That even in your essences, you will still, that scroll will still manifest. In your mistakes, the scroll will speak. When you are down, the scroll will speak. When you are up, the scroll will speak. When it looks like you are going astray, the scroll will speak and we bring you back into alignment. I now decree and declare that everything you do will be an expression of this scroll. Anything that is not an expression of this scroll, I shut that gate completely against you in the name of Jesus. I release it now into the atmosphere I release into the atmosphere. Even if you don't have a child yet, it makes no difference. I speak unto your generations. I speak, I release it into the atmosphere. And I release it this morning that you will walk in this knowledge. You will walk in this power. And it begins to walk over your children. For the fact that we am connected with you, I'm directly connected to your children. I'm connected to your grandchildren. Therefore, I speak now from this exalted ascended heights in glory realms. And I release that power. I release the power of activation of your appointed legislation over you, over your children, over your children's children. And over children that are yet unborn in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. As you step out today, you, that which had been locked in you, has been lying dormant, will start finding expression. That you will walk by somebody today, healing will take place. Now your eyes will be open to see things where you have never seen things before. That you will begin to see visions, you begin to understand things in the name of Jesus. That glory is released now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. The Lord honor you, cause his face to shine upon you. I pray this morning, I speak over congregation, I speak over assemblies, that the glory of the Lord worldwide, that there will be a release of power in the name of Jesus. I'll round up with this. I want to speak to those who are in the UK and those who are in Europe. Listen carefully. Let it not be that on your watch as a child of God, that evil Altars are erected on the highest throne in the land. I want you to go make researches. Connect with the altar that is still speaking today, the altar of the Wesley brothers. Connect with the altar of people like John Knox. People who prayed, give me, do you know what it means? Give me Scotland or I die. The same prayer for those of you in India. Connect with the prayers of John Hyde, who was nicknamed Praying Hyde, that prayed, give me a soul or I die, until revival broke out in India. Listen, that mantle is hanging in the air. I had an encounter of recent where I was in Benin and my eyes were open in a, at a particular junction where I was connected. I saw the mantle of Benson in Daosa dancing in the air. Dancing. So I went right under it and it picked me up in the dance. And as I began to swell and dance, things began to happen in Benin. And all of a sudden, with, there was a, a roar. And they began to say, 
another person in Daosa, in Daosa is here. What's going on? Then the powers of darkness, they began to say, we thought we had said that no man like Idahosa will rise again. Who is this one? But you see, the difference was that even though that mantle picked me up and I was in that dance, my mantle was speaking through that mantle. So they were confused. So they may have shot down. They may have said that the man, that mantle will not be used, but the mantle is dancing. The mantle is still active. It is still speaking. Anyone who will tap into it. And I began to see. Because I was asking, I said, Lord, why haven't men been dancing in this mantle? And the Lord began to say, because I search for people of a pure heart. Because I began to see that locked within the mantle is so much power. Not just the power for the miraculous, but there is so much power even to create wealth. I say, aha, which means it will take one who had been broken, crushed, to enter into that mantle. I just pray that the mantles over cities, because this morning YTB was speaking, it just occurred to me because of because through our life, I went to bed with a burden in my heart. I said, what happened to the mantle of John Knox? What happened to the mantle of the Wesley brothers? What happened to the island brothers? People who will say, Jesus is here, anything can happen. And death will be rising. The lame will be walking. Cancer will be disappearing. What happened to those mantles? Why has the church gone to sleep? The people call by the name of the Lord. Where are the assemblies of God? Where are the vessels? Where are the legislators? Those in the UK, rise. Rise. Take your places. Take your places by the spirit and in the spirit. Europe, rise. The time of slumber is over. It is time to break into the heights of glory, to release the glory, the wisdom glory upon the earth. Therefore, I pray this morning that this portal that is opened and this mantle that are dancing, waiting in the air to cooperate with your mantle and now decree and declare that you will begin to connect with them Mantles dancing over cities. Ayoba Balola's mantle is dancing in Ondo, Oyo Oshun, Pensin Daosa's mantle is dancing in Benin. Philip's mantle is dancing in the Middle Belt. Who are those that we enter? It is time. The Lord is waiting for you and I. Rise, brethren. Rise. The Lord bless you and keep watch over you. We'll, take, we'll continue with this tomorrow. We'll take it up again tomorrow and we'll advance. But remember, in every place that you are, any strange altar, the Lord says, shut it down, shut it down, break it down. Wipe out, wipe out the name of their gods completely. Every idol must be broken down. Every dark wizard must be shut down. The Lord bless you and keep watch over you. We'll take it up tomorrow. Invite your friends, invite families. Tell them something is happening. Something is happening. We are taking over this land. And we speak the peace of God over nations over nations. We declare that the, the peace of God, the shalom of God will break out over nations for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. As you go out worshiping today, I declare and declare that through you life will flow, will flow and there will be unusual encounters in the places that you step into 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From today, from tomorrow, we'll begin. I'm, I'm not going to wait for just Wednesday. By God's grace, all through, all through May, we are going to start activating the supernatural in us. So invite, surely young people, because it's easier for them to break into it. Young people, but those of you also who have a desire to see and to, to walk in that supernatural, if you love your neighbors, invite them. If you love, if you know cultic people, invite them because <laughs> it is even easier. Let's align them. We shall have unusual harvest of souls in the month of May because we'll be learning the supernatural you. God bless you and cause this face to shine upon you. I love you all. Bye-bye.